We are trying to change the system. I mean, this is not just about us dying draft recordings. This is not just about our little net label and our artists. This is about the whole system worldwide that we're trying to change for all musicians and all um, music lovers. So uh, we're doing this by di uh, discussing with other people about how we should change things. Um, we are going to uh, discussions uh, organized by Creative Commons organizations, by uh, government. Uh, we have been involved with uh, discussions with people from uh, Brain, the enforcers of the record labels, uh, Bima Stemra. And in some ways we discovered that there are people people of those organizations are not necessarily that evil, they're not that unwilling, they're just a bit stupid. Um, we're trying to get some bigger names, uh, of, uh, we're, uh, we're trying to persuade other artists to get go to Creative Commons. Um, there are some big artists now really interested in the new system. Courtney Love is someone I mentioned before. Richie Sakamoto is also examining uh, options on Creative Commons. And we're trying to persuade other uh, artists to do the same, or at least examine uh, the alternatives. We're trying to lobby with organizations to change laws, so uh, it's not only in advantage of uh, the industry, but also for normal consumers and normal uh, citizens. We're, uh, go uh, we're probably will talk to anti-monopolistic organizations, because all those organizations like GEVA and Bima Stemra and Brain, they often have a monopoly. This is actually going to change. According to EU laws, uh, within a year, uh, the monopoly of those organizations will hopefully end. <coughs> Promotion is another thing in which the big companies have more facilities than we have. However, uh, thanks to the internet, um, we might find ways to promote, which uh, doesn't depend on such a big network as the, uh, old style network as the industry has. So we use the internet, we use MySpace. MySpace has, been, uh, has become a quite important community site for musicians um, and other community sites from Friendster to Orca to whatever. Uh, we're trying to promote those uh, bands on those sites because um, the effect of, of, of those community networks can, r can be very, very big. <coughs> Of course, concerts are a very important uh, place for promoting our music and our label. We have organized a few evenings uh, with artists of our own uh, label. We've also participated in concerts with uh, artists who uh, license their music under Creative Commons. There's the Creative Commons Festival, so to say. <coughs> we go to events, <coughs> congresses, discussions, uh, Creative Commons uh, events. So like the CCC Congress uh, is what was one place to, uh, to tell my story. Um, podcasts and streams. Um, actually, uh, I was discussing this with Tim Pritloff. Uh, he suggested that podcasts might be an important tool for promoting. And I agree. Um, one thing is uh, you could provide free podcasts, but because the way podcasts work uh, for most users, it expires. For a certain moment, your old podcast is being is, is replaced by another. So, um, in that way, people get to know the new music, but if they really want to uh, own it, they would have to download it. Of course, there are always ways around that, but for most users, it's not that practical. Um, but the use of podcasts and streams, we could make a network of uh, online radio stations who make a selection of uh, music, uh, who specialize in certain genres, do the cherry picking, and uh, in that way publish uh, music on the, on the Creative Commons. And one other idea was to allow radios to play our tunes for free. Um, they don't, do not have to pay us licenses, they do not have to pay Bima Stemra but that would be a way to have our music promoted. So um, we would like to build a network actually of net labels and streaming radio uh, in order to promote this alternative music. <coughs> CD pressing is also an interesting uh, thing because um, in Holland, if you go to a CD pressing plant and you want to have your music CD pressed, they demand that you register with Buma Stemra. And if you want to use Creative Commons license instead of that, they will not accept your CD. 
So um, how do we do that? We found uh, some uh, CD distributor in Holland who uses CD plants abroad, um, within and outside the EU, in Spain, in Slovenia, and countries like that. Um, they were not very sentimental about licensing, and they were very willing to uh, take our CDs. And then there's another organization which, which has been very, very helpful for pressing our CDs, which gave us a very, very good deal on our CD pressing, which was very enthusiastic about Creative Commons license uh, on our music and uh, have been very friendly with us. That company was Sony Switzerland. <coughs> so, <coughs> Um, so we also would like to lobby uh, towards the government to stop these uh, s silly laws and rules <coughs> to allow uh, people to have their music dis uh, distributed and pressed. Um, of course, we do not have big studios. Um, that's some also some the big record labels have huge studios with huge uh, Pro Tools systems, and we don't have that. So we're now also uh, networking with recording engineers. There are a lot of recording engineers who really like our initiative and are willing to rec do the recording and engineering for free or for a small fee, or for example, in exchange for um, a musician to play on his uh, album. We're also networking with audio engineering schools. For example, the School of Audio Engineering, a big chain of uh, sc uh, uh, schools uh, which specializes on audio recording, uh, records bands for free because their students have to learn how to record uh, bands, so we are uh, making contact with those. We're going to uh, publish and advise people on low-budget uh, home recording. Nowadays you can get such uh, s so uh, very good audio hardware like audio interfaces, micro microphone preamps, microphones for very little money. So we're trying to um, advise people on how they get, would get their own stuff and start recording. I mean, if you have a PC, if you have a computer, and if you have an audio interface, a mic preamp, and a microphone, which costs you maybe 200, 300 euros, you already have a nice system which you can do very good digital recording. And in the future, we might, uh, who knows, there might be dying giraffe recording studios. But of course, that's for the future. So what we need is we need to have people lobbying their governments and their organizations to change the system, to uh, change the rules. Um, we want to network with musicians, net labels, producers, engineers, distributors, CD pressers, graphical artists, sysadmins. They to work together to make this uh, network of an alternative system, which is fair for everyone involved, for, for people who are really passionate about music and not about money or at least more about music than about money. We got to stop the system working from working against us, ch lobby, change the rules, um, do make an alternative system which ha shows to be very competitive uh, with, uh, with the, the, the old system. I mean, for, from our point of view, we are not necessarily out there to destroy the old system. We think that it's possible to those system, two systems to live to, uh, together. Just like in software, you have the open source movement and you have proprietary software living together. I mean, I'm a big fan of, of open source. I'm a FreeBSD user on my, I use FreeBSD on my server, but I also use an Apple. And I think it's very well possible that those go hand in hand, that our artists, for example, start under Creative Commons license and then when uh, later get signed on by a big label. And we need your suggestions. I mean, uh, we're a work in progress. Maybe we're not on the right way. Maybe we have. Maybe you have some good ideas. Maybe uh, we need. And so we like to start these discussions with a lot of people involved. Um, how we could change things and uh, things which were are good and not so good. So, I'm on the end of my talk. You find more information on our website, dangerofrecordings.com. Uh, there's a general email address info at dangerofrecordings.com and you can email me at christian at dangerofrecordings.com <laughs> Any questions? It's 
it's, it's more a comment than a question. Like, I'm, I'm working for Creative Commons in the Netherlands, yeah. and we appreciate very much what you do, but one thing, and one of the parts I've been working very hard on is this relationship between collecting societies and people who want to use Creative Commons licenses, which doesn't work at the moment. Yeah. But um, I think there's one thing which you have to be very careful with, which you said is basically like we're looking into this. If you said like one of the ways you want to experiment with things is like actually let radio stations play mm -hmm. the music you release for free. Mm -hmm. Because um, there needs to be some kind of mechanism. At the moment, like it's not po you don't have another option because like basically as soon as you use Creative Commons licenses, the collecting societies don't let you become a member anymore. No. So you're, you're fucked anyway. Yeah. So as an artist, you have the choice, okay, I go offensively in there and say, like, well, then you can play my music for free because what happens right now, people, music, Creative Commons licensed music gets played on radio stations. Radio stations have these blanket licenses and basically the money which should go to the Creative mm -hmm. Commons artists who can't get it just gets distributed among the other ones. Yeah. On the other hand, I don't think that's like the, the so there needs to be a solution for that. Yeah. Yeah. And radio stations won't work like yeah. th their biggest nightmare is their biggest thing is like for example the BBC plays 200,000 different songs a, d a week on all their radio stations and their biggest nightmare is having to obtain individual licenses yeah. so what they want is one license from something like GEMA or in the US yeah. uh, in the UK it's called uh, um, MCPRS now MCPS PRS or something like that and they would pay more even if they can have this situation where they can say like I just pay some organization and the other ones have the headache of distributing the money. Yeah. So like and then the option is okay this system obviously is unfair yeah. but like the other option is probably that you end up in a some kind of yeah. like digital rights uh, yeah. uh, system where everybody has to claim and like yeah. there is some kind of digital mechanisms yeah. for distributing that. Yeah. And the question is like if you're supporting by, by, by trying to work against that system, the, mm. the system where actually like a collective of artists, which these collecting societies are, distributes the money. If you work against that, you're working towards something which yeah. will require DRM, and I don't know if you're happy yeah. with that. So I it might be, and I think it's a much more important strategy to actually like try to work yeah. with collecting societies yeah. and see if you can fuse systems of free licensing yeah. and the practice of yeah. collective licensing. I think, uh, I think you have a very good point. Um, one thing, uh, one advantage of having a monopoly, of course, uh, for collecting agencies is that you have one organization you talk to, you pay a certain amount of money, and then uh, you're done with licensing. If you have uh, alternatives like people uh, saying, oh, I do not want to be a member of Bima Semera, but I do want to have money for my airplay, you have to suddenly have 10 organizations or 200 organizations where you have to license the music. That is a problem, and I agree on that. Um, so um, having free airplay was just one of the ideas for, uh, for promoting, um, and we're not sure yet if that's the ultimate solution. It might be a way for now for smaller artists to have their uh, music played, but in the future, yes, we would like to have, uh, uh, have some payment for airplay. So in the future, we would, and indeed, I think we should work with uh, collecting agent, uh, organizations to make a system which is fair. I think uh, in some ways, the way col uh, collecting agencies work um, for airplay, it's actually registered which uh, songs are played and then the amount of money is paid. So it's actually an artist d does get paid for, for its airplay. But um, the way it works with uh, advanced payment of licenses and uh, being forced into the system, that's something we do not like. But I agree, um, with some adjustments, the collective agencies might be uh, a good alternative and b a better organizations to, uh, for our cause and for fair payment for the artists. how these collecting societies are organized within because the principle that you actually bring authors together and say like okay we are a mon we are a group of authors a collective of authors and we ask you to pay a fair price for our music sure. is results in the fact that radio stations pay the same for like a small member of a collecting society to the collecting society as they play for Madonna or Prince like yeah. the the price like yeah. there's no Madonna would be able to make a good deal with the radio station yeah. probably, but most small artists wouldn't. So this, this idea of collective solidarity is very good. Now, yeah. unfortunately, all these collecting societies are basically run by people above 50 who haven't like, who 
partially like there's a story that the head of the the, the French collecting societies have his secretary read out his emails to mm, him yeah. like and print them 